Ron, congratulations on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Oh, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Yeah. I have a few questions I want to ask you about your background. Don't make them too tough now. What individual had the greatest influence on you in your wrestling career? The guy that had the influence on me was, uh, uh, if you remember, a, a gentleman by the El name of Elmer Pfaffenberger that uh, was my high school coach. And he was the guy, first guy in this area that did the rankings and the ratings for all the teams and all of the wrestlers. And uh, Elmer made Woodland uh, known to you know, the area. And uh, so we always had good teams, and he was the guy that uh, got it going. And quite a fellow. So Elmer Pfaffenberger. Who was your idol? Did you, did you have an idol? When you were an idol, idol, idol. Um, you mean as an athletic idol at that time? Well, when I was in high school, uh, I, was, I was either going to be a basketball player, if I could shoot it, uh, I was big enough to make it, but I couldn't make it, so they, they, they talked me to go out for wrestling. So I didn't really, uh, I didn't really know a whole lot of people, and I, you know that I looked up to at that point. Uh, later on, uh, meeting uh, meeting the coaches and stuff, uh, Mr. Favenberger and then uh, Bob Towers, who you know from Sac City, was uh, my mentor, and uh, so I looked up to him quite a bit. And uh, he was like a second dad there for a while. How did you get started in wrestling? Well, that's kind of where the same story I was just on. I was going to go out for basketball. I got cut from basketball because I was too little. Uh. You know, uh, I heard that I've, I'd talked to a lot of kids over the years about uh, uh, about coming out for wrestling. You know, and they said, "Well, we're going to basketball." So, oh man, you're perfect weight for you know wrestling. So once they cut me, I went out for wrestling, loved it, and never looked back. And that was back about 1961, 62, something like that. And went from there. What do you attribute your success in coaching to? Well, the first thing I would say, the good Lord gave me a, a, a gift, and uh, I didn't realize it was a gift. You know, coaching is a gift. You just don't walk out and do it. It's just like teaching is a gift. You know, uh, we take all the ed classes we want. doesn't make us a teacher. Uh, so uh, starting with, uh, with Jesus, uh, he was uh, the main guy, uh, got me in the right spot. And... Um, the success just came from uh, having a good value system with the team and, and setting uh, you know, good ethics and moral values and trying to stay away from some of the stuff that uh, got people into trouble and you still see people get in trouble with it today, so hopefully. Is there an outstanding situation or memory that you have involving wrestling or coaching? Well, there's a lot of, lot of them. Uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to have uh, an NCAA champion, a kid named Eric Weiss, uh, that was wrestled for me, that uh, gave me a lot of pleasure because we went all over the country together. Uh, and uh, probably uh, when he, uh, even though we, uh, he had won the freestyles and things when he was in high school, but when he went on to the NCAAs and then he became uh, um, uh, champion. He beat the kid from uh, Lehigh by the name of Brown in the finals, which uh, was something I remembered because it was, uh, you know, his second trip to the finals and uh, he made him an NCAA champion. Wow. So that was special. Why did you decide to become a coach? <laughs> uh, why did I? Do? Well, um, I had the interest of. Uh, you know, of sports. I just had I, was, I just had a competitive thing in me that I liked doing, uh, being around kids. I liked uh, I liked uh, you know being able to you know show a kid something and the kid could end up doing it. You know that was always a big deal. You know that when a kid could accomplish, didn't matter what level they were. You know if they they could do what you taught them, and uh, that made it gave me a good feeling. And uh, so I started experimenting with that when I was. Uh, uh, in junior college, I'd come home, you know, and coach help uh, coach Favenberger and things on the side, and I started liking liking what I was doing, and got got to be addictive. And so, if I have an addiction, that was the addiction. It was coaching. So, you can ask my daughters that; they'll tell you. If you could start all over again, what would you do different? Uh, what would I do different? Probably what I did when I was 20 years into the sport. I'd start out by uh, probably not worrying so much about weight control, okay? 
In the old days, it didn't seem like anybody worried about it so much, but, uh, and we did some crazy things. And as I got older, I found out that those things were uh, not so good. And, uh, and then, you know, being able to go to uh, Olympic training camps and things and see how it's really done, done in the right way. And uh, my, my, my mentor there, as mentioned, Mr. Favenberg, was also the instigator of the, of the official weigh-ins in the area. In fact, uh, he had our team, uh, had a doctor come, and we had to be certified by the doctor as to what weight we could wrestle. So uh, all of that, you know. And so I, I uh, would have liked to have incorporated that more when I was 20 or 23 uh, than 35, you know what I mean? because it didn't usually make a whole lot of difference. The kids uh, did just as well, you know, a weight up as they did down, so. And they were a lot healthier, so. What would you, <laughs> what, excuse me, what would you like people to remember you about? Remember me? Um, I would just like, uh, you know, the winning and losing isn't really the important thing. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, Talking to athletes and things uh, when, I, when they come back and they tell me stories about what we did in the wrestling room or we had fun, you know, uh, and coach was fun, made practice fun. Uh, I just want to remember, be remembered by my athletes as a guy that um, uh, gave them some inspiration and it, it wasn't always about winning. And uh, uh, if they remember me in that light, then that's probably where I'd like to be remembered is, uh, you know, coach was good at you know, uh, get us to work hard, yet uh, um, didn't, uh, well, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. Yeah. No, you're doing fine. But, uh, yeah, probably something like that. Uh, how has wrestling contributed to your life? Oh, well, <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, Coach, I am uh, 61 now, which is hard to believe. So uh, I, started, I stopped counting a couple years ago uh, when I was, was something like 40 years plus of wrestling, you know, yeah. being an athlete in uh, wrestling. And uh, um, the time uh, that uh, went by fast, and uh, uh, I would have held on to that uh, if I could have longer. You know, the body gets beat up, and you can't get down, and uh, you have to start changing your coaching style. And, and I always like to be able to take a challenge on, and uh, you know, some kid that needs his ears boxed a little bit, needs a lesson, you know, so um, I would have liked to coach longer, but, you know, but. It did contribute to your life. Oh, well, as far as the life is concerned, uh, all of the things that we did in, in, uh, in wrestling is carried over to, uh, you know, to life, you know, I mean, the discipline, uh, for, as an athlete, the discipline of, of uh, you know, uh, not just the making weight thing, but the, uh, uh, the the hours of practice, the dedication to being in shape, you know, that all carried over into uh, what life's all about anyway. You know, wrestling really, uh, I used to tell kids, you know, that a lot, that, you know, wrestling's going to be something that's going to make you a better human being, and it, and it did. And it's, it's like most athletics, you know. Well, Ron, congratulations again on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well, I appreciate that, Coach. And, uh, it's nice seeing you again after a few years, yeah. and you're looking just as good as you ever did. And... I uh, appreciate it. Thank you.